So I thought I'd do a little video of the last time that we used our Pivo Pod Silver. So I haven't used it for a while to be totally honest because I have had people at home to film me. Um, everyone's been at home a lot more during lockdown so it's not been as use as much. Um, but for this ride I was by myself, um, it was a really nice day, I wanted to see how Corey was moving um, and how we looked from the ground so I thought it was a good opportunity to give the Pivo Pod another go. So as you can see we are on the side of the arena, I normally put it in the middle on a tripod um, but the light was very low which often is in the winter so I wanted the Pivo Pod to be um, so that the light is always shining on us um, because in the past it has struggled slightly when um, it's looking into the sun basically you can't really see a lot in the shadows um, so I literally just plonked it on the fence um, on one of the fence posts which is just about big enough to get the pod on um, obviously checked that it was fairly level, um, but that was it. So I have a Samsung Note 20 Ultra. It's quite a new phone. It is capable of 8K recording, but I believe for the Pivo, it was downscaled to 4K, which is still really good quality. Um, as you can see, it's done an excellent job of filming us and keeping us in the frame. Um, my only criticism would be that the image stabilisation could be a little bit better, it's a little bit jolty, um, but really pleased for the whole session it didn't lose us once, so that's really, really good um, tracking ability for the Pivo. So I had auto zoom on, I had exp auto exposure on, and I had predictive follow off. So this is just a formula that's worked for me in the past and obviously it needs to be on horse tracking mode to do all of that. Um, so yeah, I think it's the winning formula for me so far and I'm really pleased with the video that it captured. So it's worth noting that Pivo always recommend that you do place it in the middle of the arena. But it's quite good to know that if the sun is really low and um, to the side of the arena like it was on this day, that you can still use it on the fence. And even when um, it's sort of zooming all the way to the other side of the arena, I think the quality is still good enough to see um, me and Corey fairly clearly. So, yeah, really pleased with um, how it did and I'll definitely use it again in this way. So now on to a bit about mine and Corey's session. So Corey is a very good girl. We haven't, uh, I think that was actually the first schooling session we'd done in quite a few weeks. Um, it was really icy that morning, so I didn't actually have much choice but to go in the school, but I was really glad that I did. So we did a nice, easy session. Um, when she wanted to stretch, I let her. We did some pole work, um, nothing too strenuous, and I think we did about 20 minutes in total. So for those of you that have followed us for a while will know that Corey's had a bit of time off um, due to some hind end issues. Um, she has had some steroid injections in her hocks um, and has had the go ahead to sort of start building her back up again from the vets. So I'm looking to sort of ease her into her ridden work again. She's done lots of hacking, but not much schooling. So keeping it nice and easy, nice and relaxed. Um, and yeah, so we just build things on from here. So you may have noticed that I have got some brilliant pole raisers. Um, now we are sponsored by Kublocks who make um, both the trot blocks and the pot blocks, two different types at the moment um, and they're the little blocks that are blue. 
Um, so they are so useful, really easy to use, really light, um, but actually don't fall over, which is really good. So I use them in lots of different ways, but I like to raise one end of the pole to engage um, the leg that is going over the higher end. So the configuration I've got here is just a simple set of four poles on the circle. So I do those in walk and in trot. And then the sort of fan arrangement you can see on the right hand side, I've set that up so that the inside of the fan is the right distance for walking. So that's four of my feet stepped out in between um, about the sort of place that Corey would walk. And then the outer edge of the same poles, um, the same fan, is trot distance. So I really like that setup because it's really useful to do it in both walk and trot. And I don't have to get off and move the poles around. So we just did all of these exercises a couple of times. Just worked on rhythm. Um, Corey likes to rush a little bit in the trot over the poles. So just trying to keep her soft, um, engaging her core over the poles, engaging the hind, um, the hind leg, especially the leg that goes over the raised pole. And yeah, it's just a nice, simple, but effective exercise that actually is quite a good workout for the horse. Um, you don't need to do it for very long. Um, so yeah, we only did about 20 minutes in total. Corey was very good. I was really pleased with how she went. She worked really well. She concentrated. She wasn't silly at all, which is really quite impressive after not really schooling for quite a while. Um, so yeah, really pleased with our session. If you've got any questions about the exercises that we've done or, of course, about the Pivo pod, then do pop me a message in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this video was useful. See you soon.